Good afternoon, everybody. Happy, happy Friday. Mm. This is Egypt, your hostess of Way Beyond Me. And I wanted to share something. I want to ask a question. First, I had geared this conversation for the men, but I'm thinking that it applies to both men and women. So ask yourself this question while I'm talking or any time during my conversation. Am I my brother's keeper? And when I say brothers, that can be a biological brother or just a friend, or it can be women, um, friendships, relationships, stuff like that. Am I my brother's keeper? And Usually, men and women have problems being each other's keeper because usually, like, like with men, they cover up. First of all, I believe everybody's looking for the same thing. Love, respect, honor, money, sex, um, honesty, prosperity, peace. Uh, so... We're all looking for the same thing, but a lot of people do not know how to go about getting it, really. So men usually use, when they have a need, they don't express. A lot of men don't talk. Why y'all don't talk? Why y'all don't open up and talk to us? Because we as women, we don't, like my mother used to say, I'm not a mind reader. We don't know what's really going on. Y'all don't talk. Y'all keep it inside. And when it manifests itself, it manifests itself as anger, aggression, pride, working so hard, got to work, got to work, got to work, I got to do what I got to do, false ambitions. And then when we want to talk and we want to find out, you don't want to talk to us, but you'll go to next, whoever. Anyway, I'm not going there. But then women, what we do sometimes we don't talk sometimes or, or sometimes we over we do over over and abundant we sometimes we treat our men as though they are girlfriends and ladies they don't want to hear all that i for so long was guilty for that they don't want to hear all the details all that just get to the point and men go and like i heard someone say men goes in a straight line we're the ones that go all the way around in a circle anyway we manifest our needs by backbiting talking about each other gossiping being jealous of each other, being insecure. And usually we all want the same things. And what it is, we both, men and women, want and need to be validated. So we don't know how to validate ourselves. So that leads me to a, a place in the Bible that I want to share. And it's in Genesis chapter 4. I'm going to read it. Forgive me, those who are watching, forgive me for looking down, but I can't look in the camera and read at the same time, so forgive me. Anyway, Genesis chapter 4, it says, And um, in Adam, this is in the very beginning, and Adam knew his wife, and Adam knew Eve his wife, and she conceived, and bare came, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of the sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground and offering unto the Lord. I'm going to say that again. Just listen to the difference. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground and offering to the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. I'm going to read Abel's gift. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But until Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? And why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door, and thou, and sorry, and unto thee, shall be his desire and thou shalt rule over him and so it came to you know okay verse 8 and Cain talked with Abel his brother and it came to pass when they were in the field 
that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him, killed his brother. And then verse 9, the last verse, And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? Now, first of all, he killed his brother. He was jealous. Secondly, when God asked, Where's your brother? How are you going to get smart with God? And say, I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? Yes, you're your brother's keeper. But he got like sarcastic and indignant with God. And God asked him. God already knew where he was. Because was, Abel's blood was crying out to him. from It was soaking in the ground. And God already knew. So this happened. This starts from the beginning. Look, look from the beginning. When Adam and Eve was in the garden. And the serpent came and tricked and beguiled Eve. And God asked Adam and, and Eve. Because he knew. They hid themselves. They were afraid. When they both ate of the tree of good and evil, they, they knew the difference. Before, they didn't know the difference. They were just naked in the, in the garden, just going on. But then they knew they were naked after they'd been enlightened. So when God asked Adam, what have you done? And he was like, well, the woman you gave me, she gave me the fruit and I ate it. And then when Eve was asked, well, she said it was the serpent that beguiled me. So in other words, instead of taking responsibility for what they've done, they passed it on to the next person. And that's what we do today. We do that all the time, not looking at what we do. We're taking responsibility for ourselves. We look at somebody else and say, well, they did it. And you know I can't stand on when people, like, when you confront them about something, and they include somebody else. Okay, I'm asking you, why did you do this? Or why did you say that? Well, so-and-so did it. Well, everybody do it. This is the person do it. I'm not talking about them. I'm not talking about everybody else. I'm actually asking why you did it. Not who made you do it. Because you have a choice. You have, if somebody, Nobody can make you do anything you don't want to do. So people do that all the time. They like they include other people as though that's going to justify what they did. And so... They pass off the responsibility of what they did or said or behaved or what decisions they made. They pass it on to everybody else is doing it or that person made me do it or the situation is because of this. It's because of this that I did that. No, it's not. You did that because you wanted to do it. You made your own decision. It don't matter what the circumstances is. You can make a decision that's right. And that's what people do every day. And forgive me for looking down. I have a few notes. Okay. And so we do that. Now, from Cain, from now this is this is something because the first child, which was Cain, was brought was was conceived in sin because they that was the fall of man. When they had Cain, that was that was after they fell. Both Adam and Eve they fell. They failed the test. They failed, you know. Um, they failed what God told them to do. They failed. So they had Cain. They had Cain in sin, and so. After that, then they had Abel, but it just seemed, it's funny, look at the names. Cain is like close to Cain't. Abel is, he's Abel. So, sometimes when we have children, we don't know, we don't know how they're going to be. So, it's best to have a good heart and we can pass that on to our children, but you never know how they're going to turn. Sometimes you can be the best parents and your children still going to do what they do. It's all in choice, it really is. So, Cain was conceived from sin. And that's why his heart was not good. His heart was just so off. How are you going to be jealous of your brother? And the thing is, that happens today. God gave them two separate jobs to do. Two separate jobs to do. Cain, he did the farming. And Abel, he, he did the sheep. The livestock. Just like David, the livestock. They had two separate jobs. So how are you going to get jealous because the other person is doing better in their job that's not even not even assigned to you. You don't even have the same type of work that you're doing. But you're jealous of them because they're succeeding in what they're doing. We do that today real, real bad. We look at what somebody else is doing. And they're doing their own thing. They ain't even bothering you. They're doing their thing. They're making their choice to do what they want to do in excellence, in the spirit of excellence. And that's what Abel did. He wanted to be excellent in what he was doing. Cain could have been excellent in what he was doing, but he chose to look at his brother and get jealous when God chose Abel's gift over Cain. Could look at the difference. Abel gave the first. Abel, Abel gave his best. 
it says Cain just gave an offering. Cain probably ate some of the fruit and waited till whenever and sun went down. He probably ate and burped and did whatever. Then came and gave God the offering. But Abel gave God his first, and then he gave him some fat. Of it. So he gave more because he gave from his heart. He wanted God, he wanted to show God, okay, this is what I produce. You get it first. You get it first. And so Cain was jealous of that because God favored Cain's offering. And so, um, and I, I'm going to read, um, oh, I did that already, okay. And then he then, on top of that, then when God approached him and said, why are you mad? Okay, fine. If you have done good, I would have blessed you and I would have accepted you. But if you didn't, if you're not doing good, the evil was right there, and he was right. Evil was right there. Re evil was right at the door, and when you dwell in evil, you're reacting evil, for real. When you dwell in evil, when you dwell in jealousy, when you dwell in pride, false ambition, anger, gossip, backbiting, insecurity, when you dwell in those things, it has to manifest itself through your life. You're going to behave in those ways. It's going to come out. There's no, whatever's in your heart. I remember doing the podcast about the toothpaste. Whatever's in you, when you get pressed enough, it's going to come out. So the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And that's the truth. When you, whatever's in your heart is going to come out. It don't matter. You can play phony if you want to. You can act like it ain't like that. And people be in denial about their stuff. I always say this. People know what they do. If you are a liar, you know you are a liar. Come on. And, but when you called out, when you when somebody's called out, they, when they call you out, then you want to cover it up, get all mad, blow up, you know, just try to take the attention off of your lie, off of the off your personality. When all you have to do is take, tell the truth. The Bible said you should know the truth, and then to make you free, tell the truth. Even if the truth is not desirable, it's still the truth. It won't change once you get past it. It's over. Okay, yeah, I did it. Okay, I, I'm dead. I, okay, you can do two things. I did it, so what? I don't care. Or I did it, I'm sorry. I'll work and I won't do it again. The latter is a lot better because people will trust you when they know you're telling the truth. Okay. And so God cursed Cain. He was like, you're a curse from the earth. You're a curse from my present. And you will not prosper. Whatever you try to do will not prosper. You'll be a fugitive, which is they'll be looking for you. You'll be running here and there, and you'll be a vagabond. A vagabond is a person who don't have a settle, not settle at all in their life. Going from place to place, living here, living there, jumping from job to job, jumping from girlfriend to girlfriend, jumping from uh, relationship to relationship. That's a vagabond. You're not settled. You're not settled in your own life. You know, you move every place. Every time you turn around, you're moving. Every time you turn around, you got a different job. Every time you turn around, you got a different relationship. And so that's a vag vagabond. If you find yourself being a vagabond, you might want to check your attitude and check how you're doing. Check your relationship with God because when you, you when you settle, you're okay with everything. You don't have to keep running around, jumping, looking for something that ain't even there. So looking for love in all the wrong places. And remember when I said in the beginning how everybody's looking for the same thing. We're all looking for love, peace, security, finances, health. We're looking for good relationships. We're looking for joy. A lot of times we don't know how to go about it. And that was Cain's issue. He wanted the approval of God, but he did it wrong. He got jealous because he's so busy looking at what his brother's doing. He wasn't paying attention to what he was doing. That selfishness came in. And we do that a lot. And you know what? Later on in the story, Cain was out there. He was he left the presence of God, so he didn't have the covering of God. He did make a city, but then you didn't hear anything else about him. And it shows a lineage of Seth. Seth came after Cain, because Abel was dead. And then Seth, Seth was good again. So you hear all the lineage from Seth's, um, his people, his sons and sons, and, and all the generation of Seth. But Cain, done. Okay, so let me see. Cain, um, and then Cain, this is a trip too. When God told him, you're not going to prosper, and you're going to be a vagabond, and you're going to be out there, and whatever. Then he got a nerve to say, the punishment is more than I can bear. If I go out there like that, like you, you know, like you curse me to go out there, then people are going to, people who come across me are going to kill me. Okay, 
Uh, you killed your brother, so why would that be a big problem? I mean, no, let, let me be nice, but I just don't understand how he had that attitude. You killed your brother, but then you don't want to be killed. You don't want anybody to go out there and run across you and kill you. But God covered him and gave him mercy. God was like, okay, anybody who tried to kill Cain is going to get it sevenfold. So God put a mark on Cain that nobody will, that come across him would kill him. But they, like I said, he's still out there, but they wouldn't kill him. But for him to say, my punishment is more than I can bear, how do you think your brother felt? So, it's like, you know, God marked him so he wouldn't be killed, but he still had to go through. And that leads me to my point of now, how men, how women, how we're so jealous of each other for what we're doing. People minding their business, doing their thing, trying to make a dollar out of 15 cents. And then somebody look at that and see you prospering and... Just like the song Mary Mary said, it's the God in me. You don't know how much I prayed. You don't know how much I begged God. You don't know what I went through. You don't know how many nights I cried. You don't know how many nights I suffered. All you see is the end result of God answering prayers, of God healing, of God blessing. And then somebody will look at that and like, oh, she thinks she cute. She got it going on. Well, yeah, I do think I'm cute. And I do think I got it going on. I don't think I'm better than you, but I am better than I was. But obviously, if you saying that about me, you think I'm cute too, because you wouldn't be saying it. Why are you all on me? And you could be on doing what you're supposed to do. So I'm saying that to say, we have to just do the job that God gave us or the job that we have been assigned to or the career that we're going out to do that and stop looking at who's blowing up because you don't know if somebody sold they sold to the devil to get what they got and with the men instead of just being buddies y'all we still killing each other y'all still killing each other black on black crime but then like Kane, you don't want anybody else to do too you don't want the police to have police brutality but meanwhile you can rob somebody else you can kill somebody else you can be mean to somebody else, but then you don't want anybody to be mean to you. That's the same thing with Cain, his attitude. He killed his brother, but then he didn't want to get killed. Come on, come on. So what I'm saying is that all we have to do is just be grateful for what we have.